morning guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here welcome my name is Matt on this channel I discuss primarily my Tesla Model 3 the ownership experience over 54,000 miles uh, as well as the EV industry as a whole I um, I work on some interesting uh, EV related projects in my workshop and uh, today's video I want to discuss the uh, the new uh, what Tesla's calling plaid powertrain uh, that they were uh, recently testing in at least one but it sounds like multiple uh, Model S sedans uh, and what is it exactly that we're looking at and what are the implications for Tesla vehicles uh, for the EV industry as a whole and for other facets of um, well, projects that Tesla may be working on so wanted to dig into that now what is the plaid powertrain uh, the plaid powertrain is a triple motor system that uh, Tesla apparently has been testing in um, a couple of Model S cars and um, for those of you that are are relatively uh, have don't have as much knowledge on on Tesla cars as some of us that eat breathe and sleep uh, Tesla stuff uh, triple motor systems in Tesla cars are uh, are only it's something that they've only done in the prototype next generation Roadster now this particular car is a Model 3 it's a rear wheel drive car there's one electric motor powering the rear wheels <clears throat> then there are the all-wheel drive Model 3's those have two motors one up front one in the back uh, same with the Model S the all-wheel drive Model S has a motor up front and one in the back. The prototype next generation Roadster has three motors. It has one motor in front and two motors in back. When you're accelerating hard the weight transfers rearward and you can put a lot more power to the ground at the rear than you can in the front. So they double up the motors at the rear and one motor uh, up front. And then the Tesla Semi has four motors, one for each uh, rear wheel. But, uh, but anyway, the, the Plaid powertrain, that is, um, it would appear to be, and this is my opinion on it, the uh, testing of the, the, uh, the powertrain for the next generation Roadster. Now, I'm excited about this for a number of reasons. Number one, those of us that like performance find that it's always a good thing when performance is being increased on performance vehicles. Uh, and it's it's good for Tesla, especially with the presence of the uh, the Porsche Taycan hitting the the market. Porsche is known for their for their performance, more for uh, handling, but still they're fast cars. So with Porsche now making a performance EV, I think it's it's only wise for Tesla to uh, do the best that they can to make sure that their their performance is up. Uh, but that would also include cornering prowess. So, uh, so I'm pleased in that way. But one thing that uh, is, for me anyway, most exciting about this is it lets us know that the Roadster project is indeed moving forward. Uh, and it, I bring this up because Tesla has gone through uh, a number of, of difficult struggles in the last uh, year or two. And of course, they they seem to perpetually be going through struggles as, as any multi-billion dollar corporation that's growing at the pace they are would encounter. Uh, but those of us that have uh, a substantial discount or even one or two free Roadsters coming, for me it's uh, uh, almost 50% off of a Roadster, 40 some percent discount that I have uh, qualified in the referral program. So you know, I, I'm going to be buying my car, and a lot of us with uh, many referrals will be getting free cars. It's, it's exciting to see that the Roadster program is moving forward because uh, Tesla has, or well, specifically Elon Musk has mentioned recently that the Roadster program is not really a priority. Uh, they have to make the car because they've taken huge uh, 50000 or $250,000 deposits from a number of customers. They have to fulfill that or refund the money. So, but uh, they really have been quiet about it. Occasionally, a Roadster prototype will show up at this event or that event. <clears throat> but for the most part, we really don't hear much from Tesla about the next-gen Roadster. 
So this powertrain is is uh, it's pretty easy to assume that it is the powertrain for the for the next gen Roadster. So I'm excited to see that they are developing it, and it's wise to develop it in another car. For one thing, they only have a couple of the of the next gen Roadster prototypes, and it's very difficult to build a prototype by hand. Uh, it's a lot easier to take an existing car like a Model S and stuff that big powertrain in it and do some testing because you can do it incognito, so to speak. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, one thing I want to bring up also, however, is many of you may not be thinking about this, but I'm excited about it because also something about that Plaid powertrain, which if you do the math, it looks like in order to move a next-gen Roadster to 60 in under two seconds, with the weight of that car and, and the size of battery pack and all of that, uh, would be about 1,500 horsepower, 1,500 to 1,600 horsepower, somewhere in that vicinity. Well, it's not easy to support that, uh, not just in electric motors, which that's what we're looking at in the powertrain, but also what a lot of people don't seem to recognize is batteries are critical. Electric vehicles are not limited only by the motors. It's actually a little bit more of a limit in the batteries. And what do I mean by that? Well, one primary difference between gas cars and electric, you can take a gas car with, say, 80 horsepower, some basic tiny little runabout car with about 80 horsepower. That's a tiny 7 or 8 gallon gas tank and you can put a 1500 horsepower you know blown big block v8 in the car and it will still work just fine on that seven or eight gallon tank now you may only get a few miles of of use out of that but that gas tank will be big enough to support the engine the fuel delivery system fuel pump and fuel lines will have to increase in size but the fuel tank can still remain very small without any uh, any issues at all and uh, but that's not the case with an electric car with an electric car so you take a small electric car you know Nissan Leaf or some other equivalent small car and uh, that has I don't know if, uh, what a, a Leaf has 120 horsepower 140 something like that and all of a sudden try to get 500 horsepower out of it well, you could put 500 horsepower of electric motor in that car, but the battery pack won't discharge enough current, enough amperage, to support that motor. So you have to increase the battery size by paralleling it with you know, two or three more battery packs in order to get that the discharge rate that that electric motor and the supporting inverter is requesting in order to output that much power. Well testing the Plaid powertrain in a Model S, you know, it. that means that either they have a much bigger battery pack in that Model S or they have different chemistry cells. Have they moved from the 18650 cells that the Model S has always used to the 2170 cells that the Model 3 uses? I don't know, but that is something that I... Uh, I'm excited about and that I don't think very many people are, are thinking much about. I, I haven't watched all the videos or read all the articles of other people's opinions on the Plaid powertrain to know, but what I have watched and read, I have yet to see anybody mention, uh, and again, there may be people mentioning it, but I haven't yet run across anybody mentioning that the Plaid powertrain would require uh, a more substantial, uh, either in size or chemistry battery pack than the, the normal performance Model S would have, unless they, they have the Plaid powertrain in the Model S and have have purposely restricted the uh, the three power inverters to uh, less amperage than the uh, next-gen Roadster will be seeing, and that's a possibility as well. But again, I'm excited about the powertrain because of the implications not only for the Model S, but for the Roadster, but also I'm excited to see What's Tesla doing with the battery pack in that car? So, don't know that they're ever going to tell us. We may just have to wait for the next-gen Roadster to come out. But uh, but I'm excited about it, and uh, it's it's something that is uh, it's good to see. It's good to see that Tesla is indeed taking cars to racetracks and uh, pushing the limits of their, uh, their technology that, that they have developed and are implementing in their cars. 
So that's my take on it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming up on the channel. So keep your eyes peeled. Quick secret for you guys. There's another EV coming to the channel.